Hey guys, I'm Andre, a certified translator and a real estate concierge. We are in Libyazhe district in northern Minsk. Nice place to live and relocate. Just like the city and the country, as per always parading through the western countries, I guess. What's your bet it's gonna be a big deal this season? Well, this way or the other, this clip is gonna be a little bit on the boring side. I'll just tell you how a real estate concierge can be handy when you decide to move or relocate or even just to travel to Belarus. In reality, Belarus is orderly, nice, safe place, which is sometimes a little bit overly organized, meaning that there is a book of professions, jobs that one can officially have in their labor book. There is a labor book that's uh, any employee getting once they get a position in some company, like a courier, a manager, a messenger, whatever. So the official books here, of course, do not contain such a profession, real estate concierge. Literally, it's the guy who opens the door to your property in many ways, if you can read between the lines. And most of the people watching my channel can read between the lines, thanks. And uh, today I'm going to tell you about how my day is structured to tell you how it works, to tell you what I can do. And again, about half of things I can do, uh, I can't really advertise officially for a variety of reasons. Let's just say simply, I'm an official translator, English to Russian and backwards, sometimes Belarusian. You may laugh at that, but that's sometimes important. And uh, I'm also a chief of my own company, LLC CSIS. I'm relocating people through the last two years, two plus years, over 40 people, a couple of families. Most of them are actually still sticking around. So let's see what happens from morning to evening and like early morning, late at night uh, in a real concierge world to show you how that may be helping you once you're here on the ground. And among other things, I would like to thank all of you very much who are helping my channel to survive. The Patreon guys, there's a handful, like a dozen names that are donating money there. I fixed my bank here. Uh, partly just only one bank can allow Western money to come via SWIFT down here into Belarus and Google services here for Belarus mostly do SWIFT transfers just like conventional bank transfers so they don't allow, uh, allow any other digital shortcuts or live hacks or money hacks whatever the bank money is coming in so push the thanks button under the video not this video you may find it boring but push under others that tell you about how to buy a house how to buy an apartment how we're living here and subscribe to a membership some videos will be released with access to members uh, before uh, anybody else can see them thank you very much let's see what what's happening down the day of a concierge right now I'm sitting in perhaps my favorite migration office if there can be a favorite one Central Island District which as you probably know from the previous videos is one of the best areas to live in Minsk from all respects someday this year I'll be releasing a district video about Minsk and where best to buy rent and so on and so forth here we are just for a minor job collecting the uh, uh, basically visas for both clients the Indian guy and the Canadian guy the Canadian guy has been around here for a while. It's first time for the Indian guy and both are collecting multiple entry visas which go after the residency. So my job is to make sure they come around 8 o'clock and change and leave around 8.30. Let's say no, no later than 9. In a different district my American client is collecting his residency and I guess this night he is very anxious about becoming or not becoming a villager of Belarus with his countryside property he's gonna get residency and will apply for the visa as well so this is the major part of my job to get people settled at their new home place in Belarus well the security guys didn't kick me out after all so maybe there's someone already lining up downstairs like the Chinese students or other applicants maybe they'll be coming soon right here 
Meanwhile, I have a few moments to translate the power of attorney. A client has decided to leave Belarus, like on a very short notice, and uh, before he checked with me, of course. Now, in Germany, he had to get his power of attorney generated, certified, legalized, get the apostille. And over here, after getting it by post yesterday, I'll have to translate it back into Russian, get it legalized, more like not arise, not legalized, and basically get the job done, get his rental contract finished, cancelled, and submit his key to the uh, apartment owner. It's a pretty expensive block, by the way. And this would be it. His hands will be clean. The Belarusian project will be finished. By the way, he also opted for a company creation for residency, which I always argued was really far from being a perfect solution. Even short term, spending little money, you will not get this money back. Now that they upped the official mandatory salaries for the foreigners, it doesn't seem to be any good solution at all. So let's see how that apartment thing plays and how painful it's going to be to cancel that contract before I go on holiday. The whole procedure was painless because it's perfected by now. Fix the line early, be first or second, as long as the client doesn't get late, of course. There's this ton of circumstances which get people delayed, even if the Germans oversleep the appointment. So sometimes you learn something new. Migration office number two, Leninsky district, just counterclockwise across the city. We seem to be lucky for now. There's almost nobody in the line and probably the Chinese students are still getting there back to the second motherland to learn some stuff. So the traffic at the migration offices isn't too bad. Now it's 10.05 and the temperature outside is roughly 20, 27, 28 degrees centigrade, which is very hot, I would say, by local standards. And uh, the major point here is why I'm not wearing a cool suit and there's no tie and nicely polished shoes. That's why. Well, my main reason is I'm your ground tactical bureaucrat. So to get the job done, to outrun somebody, to get you through at the shortest possible time, you have to be suitably dressed, essentially dressed and armed in many ways. And we're not talking about any connections, any, uh, you know, informal ways of getting the job done. Everything is legal, everything is by law. It's just the very good command of law and how it's applied in the field that gets the job done. Although technically I don't have an office, I mean, technically there is one, but there is none. I'm moving around, I am your office and the city is my office. The office day can get messy. 13.30 appointment with the notary didn't work out because the guy who was supposed to handle the deal on the buyer's side said Oh, really? Where is that? What time? Oh, I have guests. I have to travel. I'm leaving. I can just visit them for five minutes to sign papers. The notary appointments are not five-minute things, so... Could you plan it sometime down the week? Yeah, of course we can plan it sometime down the week. It's normally one or two weeks before you get a certain notary appointment and some notaries may be more helpful than others. So it was important to keep our appointment and of course to keep my weekend planning and everything, but the guy needs to fly away. So we're all dependent on the guy. A pretty horrible sensation, by the way. So if you leave somebody to act on the ground on your behalf, the guy that we are waiting to come back now is on the buyer's side. Make sure you pick your people well. They know what punctuality is. They respect other people's plans and everything. And let's hope this deal actually works out the next week because I would have to go to the province and fix all the paperwork in the name of the new owner of the property before this paperwork can actually go to his country and become a basis of visa application.
Generally, I don't find myself dealing often with the healthcare industry over here. It's kind of uh, kind of obvious, perhaps. The private centers that foreigners mostly use are kind of English speaking and client oriented. So you can fetch a G GP coming over to your uh, apartment just on a call on a prior booking. That's not a problem. But sometimes there are just uh, cases when somebody has to make company as a translator to a person undergoing MRI. That was an interesting experience. I'll put the price tag over here. And the recent experience, the ongoing job, 16 o'clock, just outside here, there's kids clinic, a regular local clinic where kids have to have subscription or attached, be being attached to for the sake of getting certificates for clubs, schools and everything. My client, a good Indian guy who just got his residency. The family of two kids are 2012, 2014 years. Uh, they have to get the subscription for the school, the certificates of uh, health status. They have to basically undergo some basic specialists, take some tests, and uh, that's what we're doing. And one might think, yeah, why would there be a translator doing all these rather simple things? And uh, even as a translator, as a Russian-speaking guy, I was amazed how the school football us away first time. First, the guy went there without me, just with some friend of family, and they said, no, this uh, district is not served by this school, so please go away, talk to some education office of the area and find out where you belong. Once we discovered that the school has a website and it pretty much says that our house belongs there, we paid their visit again with my paid company now. And uh, we talked to the headmaster who said, well, guys, I can do nothing. Just bring me the medical certificates and then I'll be happy to accommodate you. By that time, we knew what kind of vacancies they had at school. But the school papers from India are missing. They're going to be here somewhere in November, early November. So we had to undergo medical tests, which was a bit of a challenge itself. It took us three sessions to get there because the phone inquiry says, yeah, you, it's all right. Your, your uh, district uh, doctor is seeing you, we can be seeing you between 16 and 19 today. And the first thing that she asked once we bu bumped in there, like, Guys, why the hell are you here? You have to get the general subscription with the head doctor, which is, of course, away right now, uh, like treating some big guys or whatever, some conferencing stuff. And you have to go there like tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock. And um, then I'll be happy to accommodate you. So we went there and then we got some basic uh, um, certificates for tests, which were all uh, free of charge tests, although they kind of claim that you have to pay for it. But guys on residency here undergo similar healthcare services like the um, the locals so that was not a problem we took those tests we submitted them and then just uh, now we are standing by to finish the um, final registration with the school we'll take these papers to school we're waiting for their call uh, we will be waiting for their call after they review the policy for kids of a certain age and without a certain official schooling background. Where, where, where can they belong on which basis, blah, blah, blah. So it's all a complicated thing, but it's doable. And it's funny to navigate between the school executives, like, you know, big shots. It's a prestigious kind of school, like upgraded school. There are just uh, average secondary schools, but our district has a gymnasium, which is like an up-end place. Well, it has its up, up and uh, shortcomings, just like all the other up and and VIP things in this country, but later about these. At the very start of my career, when I was shaping the concept of a real, concierge, real estate concierge for myself, I was amazed several times on several occasions how real estate agencies who handsomely earn off the deal can be actually neglecting little wrinkles like interaction with the bank, especially a foreigner interacting with the bank, which has become a more of an issue now that lately sanctions added some pressure to getting cash, getting cash converted, etc., etc. So there has to be somebody, and definitely it's not a standard translator, and definitely it's not a standard conventional real estate agent who's going to be doing that for you. Here is the case. The bank behind me is the bank of our seller, one of the bank accounts that she has. The seller is getting rid of a three-room apartment and on the deal day she is expecting to leave the bank with a stack of cash and as you know from my previous videos it's not rubles so how do we get this arranged with my american client who is still a little bit american in his mind although he's a fine lad and everything uh, buying a three-room flat to accommodate kids and wife how do we get this done safely and uh, don't lose much on commission so my little investigation, I'm not sure if the agency went that far, maybe they already have a solution. My little investigation says that the bank 
allows the uh, uh, better the special conversion rate for cash transactions which means we have we should rather come up here with cash or wire the cash to the seller in which case there are no incoming transfers from the side of this bank so you send uh, 200,000 rubles you get over here to the seller's account 200,000 rubles but the seller doesn't want to leave with rubles that's Belarus so what does she do she cashes all these monies out there on the spot converts it out there on the spot the bank can offer a special rate only on the deal day that's only the figure that we will know on the deal day and the deal will be complete with the signature of the handover act of the acceptance act for the money by the seller what happens later i'll tell you at the cadastro agency when we get there so prior investigation little research finding out wrinkles issues and everything before the deal happens to make sure it happens at all lies on the shoulders of the real estate concierge one of the most intriguing bank jobs was about a different bank by the way my south african client who uh, was a farmer he uh, cashed all his hammers and sickles and put it into several belarusian banks he managed the monies remotely until he realized he wanted them to move to one single bank like basically two so that took us to um, take out cash out some 50 or 60 thousand rubles in cash which was about like this much and when we had it in our hands he was obviously perturbed by the cream uh, by the crime st situation on the streets translating his own south african johannesburg realities onto belarusian peaceful and safe uh, picture <clears throat> he said oh what do we do next obviously he was a bit on the older side he was a bit nervous oh i said that's what we're gonna do we put it in some yellow bag and i said just keep up with me please i'm not running away just let's move where we have to move you know at our pace so we got the job done and put the money into the bank where he saw most fit our annual rates are by the way on average are like this not sure how he profits from that but i guess he can count his money and his swiss holidays uh, ski holidays will be um, all right this year as well if he's watching cheers to south africa If you're looking for a long-term or a short-term uh, rent in Minsk, long-term is six months plus, short-term is several days to several weeks, a couple of months, you may use the assistance of a real estate concierge and a translator. As a translator with, let's call it, some advanced training, I'm pretty confident I can balance your interest with the immigration laws and your budget with the expectations of a landlord, or let's say against it, because not many landlords will be happy to drop the price the way we sometimes do but my services will eventually be free of charge or almost free of charge depending what, on what kind of deal we find uh, you can research yourself and you can bump into some realities that you will be a, you will may misunderstand or you will take some time to interpret the right way also it's helpful and that follows from experience to explain some things to the landlords and to the tenants and to uh, undo some conflicting, conflicting situations once the deal has been signed or to negotiate certain solutions that will be observed before the contract has been signed. So each, each way you slice it, any way you slice it, it may be helpful to have a translator on your side to save some time and to save some money. Sometimes negotiating a perfect rental deal can look like that. And sometimes you'll be succeeding researching on your own but based on my experience if you need to do it fast and to save some money my services will come almost for free depending on our success on what kind of bargain we find it's gonna be trouble free and cost effective solution for your problem on hand
Most of the regular clients may have recognized the background over there. That's the state secret service. And this is the Vasilki network chain. Of the best place for a consultancy. Consultancy is the beginning of any project. And through two, throughout two years of relocating people, I find it to be the best filter on my side. Because the guys who say, yeah, you were 40, 50 dollar consultancy, they could wait, we'll do it later when we're ready, blah, 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 which is all their right and everything. But as the experience proves, it's much easier if you're really intending to relocate to either do your own research completely, entirely, thoroughly, or pay 40 dollars or 50 dollars to save 400, 500, 4,000, give or take. I'll just give you a couple examples about a guy not having a consultancy on time or in time and you'll be the judges of your own whether or not it's worth it to take a consultancy or do it later when you're ready. There is a guy who is flying to Minsk from Moscow, his employer says Minsk Moscow has visa free regime, you can fly in without visa, no problem. I'm telling the guy would you like a consultancy before you take any actions on your visa process and your relocation thing? He says, no, I'm confident I'm doing everything and okay, we'll do it later when I feel like doing it. He's denied from boarding because you can't really do visa free from Moscow to Minsk, his ticket burns, whatever his employer, employer said, I don't know, but he saved his back then $40 worth of consultancy money. The second example is my favorite. The guy is balancing between several uh, solutions to get his residency, between st university on student visa, buying a property and a few others. And eventually when we sit down and I'm saying, yes, I can do this and this and this, and the consultancy would cost this much, he says, he's a pragmatic, money-conscious guy is the term. He says, yeah, when I'm ready to take a consultancy, I'll take it. Six months later, he takes this uh, language course, we meet each other and says, Andre, do you know that the university doesn't, uh, doesn't willingly give one an exit visa when one has to go somewhere on a business trip or something like this? The answer is yes, I bloody know that universities are very uh, visa conscious and it takes three weeks before you get your exit visa. So, but the good thing is, buddy, you saved your 40 bucks. That's about it. So consultancy is frequently handy for breakfast and breakfast is frequently handy at Vasilki whenever the place is open and um, functioning. Normally it's very early and it's around the week. So that's the best start of any interaction, of any beginning, of any project to relocate to Belarus. I hope the video was not super monotonous. There were multiple other cases that I couldn't put on tape because people wouldn't uh, want and because the nature is too complicated to explain. But I'm pretty sure that if you're looking for an immigration solution, I'm confident that I'll be helpful on the ground for you. This was Andre from Minsk. See you around here somewhere at the expat meeting or somewhere for a coffee. Uh, don't forget to write, share your feedback underneath the video, positive or negative, interacting with me, interacting with some other operators, and I hope to see you in Minsk someday. Cheers!